Welcome to Thermotron's webinar about the importance of table uniformity with HALT and HAS. Thank you for registering and attending today. Feel free to submit questions at any time. After the presentation, we will answer as many questions as time allows. If we miss your question or run out of time, we will provide a document with all of the questions and their answers. Presenting today is Mike Hicks and Mark Pike. Mike Hicks is an applications engineer with 20 years of experience in manufacturing and testing of electronic assemblies and 15 years of experience of testing and training with Halt and Haas. My name is Mark Pike and I am Thermotron's marketing manager. I have been working in industrial marketing for more than 10 years. Our agenda for today includes a brief background on Thermotron, AST basics, the importance of table uniformity in miners rule, and finally, available equipment to help perform Halt and Haas. Thermotron Industries is headquartered in Holland, Michigan and is a premier worldwide manufacturer of environmental test chambers, vibration test systems, accelerated stress test equipment, and functional test and measurement equipment. We specialize in combined environmental systems, application-specific software, and custom design engineering. Thermotron has more than 50 years of experience in the environmental testing industry, providing solutions to many of the world's largest companies to help them improve product quality and reliability. Accelerated stress testing, or AST, is a process by which stresses, such as temperature and vibration, are applied to products well beyond normal use environments to determine their operating and destruct limits. These stresses are applied as the product is functionally tested and continuously monitored for failures. AST is commonly used to eliminate design problems, helping to develop a robust, mature product prior to market introduction. It can also be used to screen out infant mortality issues prior to shipment. If done correctly, accelerated stress testing dramatically decreases the total time and cost required to obtain reliability data about a product under development. This is particularly evident when compared with more traditional life testing that takes thousands of hours. Many companies go to great lengths to gain and maintain a competitive edge over their competitors. Significant emphasis is placed on developing test methods that reduce the amount of time spent on testing new products so they can be brought to market sooner. Building reliability into new products early in the design and development cycle can maximize effectiveness and increase return on investment. Failures will most likely occur well outside the advertised product specifications. A great deal can be learned about your product by simply knowing when, where, and how it fails. The following are a few types of life testing procedures meant to help improve product reliability. Reliability assurance is an in-depth process for preventing and reacting to product failures so that test criteria are met for building reliability into product design. Design verification evaluates the product's design reliability. Life cycle testing subjects product samples to a lifetime of normal exposure stresses. Product qualification is a series of tests that are performed to ensure final product meets defined requirements. Process validation verifies whether manufacturing processes and procedures are under control. And finally, stress screen precipitates latent defects into failures. Accelerated stress testing can be performed a few different ways with various pieces of equipment. Most commonly, an accelerated stress testing system is comprised of three components. A chamber, capable of ultra-fast temperature change rates, a repetitive shock vibration table, and a control system. Shown here is the vibration output from an AST repetitive shock system. In this graph, vibration is measured by three accelerometers mounted in three separate directions, shown in red, blue, and green. The purpose of repetitive shock vibration is to stress or stimulate the product at high levels until it fails. Oftentimes, it is an energy at a specific frequency that causes a product failure. Since we do not know what the frequency is in advance, it is important to provide an equally strong stimulus across all frequencies and all directions. We think this quote from GM Halt expert Larry Edison speaks volumes to the importance of accelerated stress testing. The fundamental concept in Halt thinking is to excite all possible weaknesses. Because we do not know what the weakness is in advance, nor the frequency that will excite that weakness, we would like to provide an equally strong stimulus across all possible frequencies. Higher frequencies are needed in the world of electronics because many of their inner workings of microchips and surface mount components have very high natural resonant frequencies. And now, I'd like to hand it over to Mike Hicks, Thermotron Applications Engineer. He'll be going over the basic principles of HALT and HASS. Thanks, Mark. 
Highly Accelerated Life Testing, or HALT, is a test that uses progressively higher and higher stresses to determine potential product design weaknesses. Thermal, vibration, and product-specific stresses such as voltage margining or humidity are used in HALT. The stress levels are typically increased significantly beyond the product specification and normal field stresses until it fails. The purpose of HALT is to quickly induce and detect as many failure modes as possible, expose the weakest points of the design, learn from the failure modes, and take corrective action. Failures found during HALT under high stresses are likely the same failures that will occur during a product's life cycle by much lower stresses over a long period of time. Ultimately, the idea is to build into the product several lifetimes of use in its field environment. Thermal step stressing is one way to perform HALT. A typical test begins at ambient temperature and will increase or decrease in 10 degrees C increments every 10 minutes. This is continued until there is a failure or the temperature reaches the fundamental limits of the technology used in the product. This could be the temperature at which a crystal stops working when getting cold or the temperature that solder reflows when going hot. Basic HALT procedures also use step stressing for increasing vibration levels. The test starts at a low stress level, remains at each level for about 10 minutes, and then includes running the product's diagnostics. Stress levels are increased until a failure occurs. During testing, when a failure occurs during any of the temperature or vibration step stresses, the operator should stop the test, identify where the failure occurred. If possible, temporarily fix the failure, and then continue increasing the stress. An additional HALT procedure is to add hot and cold rapid thermal transitions to the vibration as shown in this graph. The red line shows the temperature being ramped from hot to cold every 10 minutes while simultaneously stepping up vibration every 20 minutes, shown here in blue. HALT chambers are used to create stresses of extreme temperature range extreme temperature ramp rates, and random six-axis repetitive shock vibration simultaneously. These same chambers, with some modifications, are also used in HASS. Design validation testing, or DVT, is another way to test product reliability. I will clarify some differences between HALT and DVT. The goal of HALT is testing to fail, whereas the goal of DVT is to pass the test. DVT's purpose is to prove the product will function in its intended use environment by meeting a required specification. When all tests are passed and no failures are detected, DVT is considered successful. This can be a lengthy process requiring repeated DVT in response to unforeseen failures until no failures are found. This process ideally results in products that perform to their life expectancy under normal use. In contrast, the purpose of HALT is to quickly induce and detect as many failure modes as possible. A proactive technique, HALT, focuses on the mode and mechanism of failure, not on the specifications or the level of stress. It is considered successful when it causes a failure and corrective action can be taken to improve the product. HALT takes days, not months, to complete. This process results in a product that has several times its normal useful life expectancy. This enables the use of HASS to quickly detect any slippage that might occur in the manufacturing process or even in component substitution from the original design. This graph shows a narrow range in the center which signifies the product's normal use specifications. This is the range where the manufacturer warrants that the product will work. Outside of the product specifications are the upper and lower operating limits when the product will stop working. If the stress is backed away from these limits, the product will begin to work again. It was not broken, just inoperable. The final limits are the red brackets that signify the destruct limits. These are the points which when passed, the product breaks and will not work again until it is fixed. This pie chart is a summary of product failures from 47 different HALT tests done on a variety of different products. It shows that a vast majority of failures are found during vibration step stressing and the combination of temperature and vibration phases. The unique features of multi-axis broad spectrum vibration 
found in repetitive shock vibration that is used in halt and hass is what makes it such an effective reliability tool. Now we will go over the basics of HASS. Highly accelerated stress screen or HASS is a screen of already manufactured products that use similar but less severe stresses as HALT. This production quality screen quickly identifies weaknesses that might enter the product due to changes or malfunctions in the manufacturing process. Each weakness detected represents an opportunity to take corrective action prior to shipping large quantities of flawed product. The screen is tuned so that it detects weak products while still leaving several lifetimes of field use. HASS is an effective way to check for flaws or weaknesses that are introduced by design updates, component changes, and process differences. A good HASS will flush out assemblies that would fail early in the product's life. It reduces production time by screening quickly using rapid thermal change rates and multi-axis vibration. The products that ship are proven to be functional during the HASS screen with any weak products that would have failed early screened out during the HASS. Because the product has used HALT to make it more robust, the HASS screen will remove only a small percentage of the life of the product. Using the limits found in HALT along with the product specifications, this diagram also shows where a typical ESS screen would fit in within the product specifications. During HASS, the operator will actually take the thermal and vibration st stresses beyond the operating limits but well short of the destruct limits. The detection screen will be well within the operating limits to determine if the product is working correctly. This shows the highly accelerated nature of HASS. Some typical problems that can be found using HASS are Poor solder quality, socket failures, component failures, bent IC leads, incorrect components, improper component placement, test fixture, program errors, and tolerance issues. This graph illustrates a typical HASS thermal profile. It starts with rapid thermal ramps, heating and cooling with dwells long enough to execute functional diagnostics. These can go outside of the product's operating limits but must not exceed the destruct limits. Six axis vibration is added with slow thermal transitions and functional diagnostics. Significant vibration levels based on halt are alternated with low level vibration also known as tickle vibration. In reliability engineering there is a description of the life cycle of a product as a bathtub curve. This curve shows the highest incidences of failure at product infancy. As time goes on, the incidences of failure become much lower and levels out at a low level for a long period of time. As the product gets near the end of its life, the number of failures increase again. The screen introduces enough stresses so that any failures that would develop during that infancy period will become evident during the screen. These products are not shipped out without being fixed so that the number of failures of products remains at a low number until the products are old and well out of warranty. Now we will go over accumulated fatigue and miner's rule. These are very important concepts when looking at accelerated stress testing and table uniformity. One way to illustrate the time savings of HALT is the fatigue formula of miner's rule or sometimes called miner's criterion or miner's law. It is a formula that determines the amount of accumulated fatigue damage a product experiences. Miner's rule, d equals n times sigma to the beta factor, shows us that by increasing stress, we can accumulate a lifetime of fatigue damage in a short time frame. d is the accumulated fatigue damage. It equals n, which is the cycle of stress, multiplied by sigma, which is the stress. Sigma is to the power of beta. Beta is a number that is determined and calculated for each material. It is usually a number between 8 and 12. Accumulated damage is exponential, not linear. With a beta factor of 10, doubling the stress is about a thousand times the accumulated fatigue. This principle is the real magic behind HALT and HASS. We get highly accelerated results 
because of the power of this accumulating stress. When performing HASS as a screen, we typically need to test as many products at one time as possible. Products are evenly distributed and mounted on the table. Then an accelerometer is attached to each product. With the exponential nature of accumulating fatigue, we need to make sure that each product is experiencing the same amount of stress. Even relatively small differences can be significant increases of stress based on what we know about Miner's Rule. If parts of the table are experiencing less stress, then the products are receiving an inadequate screen. If parts of the table are experiencing more stress, then some products could be dangerously stressed to the point of premature failure. Due to the problem with lack of uniformity when performing HASS, Thermotron invented multi-zone control as a solution. Multi-zone control is a Thermotron patent pending invention that optimizes table uniformity by allowing the table to be controlled in one, two, or four zones through the control system. Each zone has its own accelerometer and can be controlled very tightly to provide optimal table uniformity. This allows the controller to use up to four independent control loops to tightly control each one rather than calculating the average. This is a graphic of a typical repetitive shock vibration table. This shows what four different products could be reading with a 20 GRMS set point. This shows a 25% differential from the set point at some of the locations. Repetitive shock tables are not uniform when they are built, and when the vibration table is used, the impactors begin to wear and they can become even more unbalanced. It should be noted that some tables are better and some are worse in terms of uniformity. Now, Using Miner's Rule, the illustration above shows relative accumulated fatigue. This number cannot be used to predict end of life, but you can show the relationship among different products. Our goal was 20 GRMS. With a 25% deviation from the set point, the accumulated fatigue could be anywhere from 6% to 931% of the planned goal in each of the four zones. The 6% accumulated fatigue of the planned screen would likely be an insufficient screen, so many products with infant mortality issues will not be screened out. The 931% of accumulated fatigue of the planned screen would likely be life-shortening. HASS is a process that is supposed to improve the quality of the product shipped, yet it could actually be removing life from some products and not screening others if done incorrectly. This illustration shows a Thermotron Extreme AST table with multi-zone control. Typical uniformity after stabilization is that each of the, our four zones are within 0.2 GRMS of the control set point, which in this case is 20 GRMS. As impactors wear or if the table is loaded unevenly, the control system will compensate to provide evenly distributed GRMS acceleration levels. If the impactor performance drops below certain levels, the system monitor and the controller will show either a caution or a failure, indicating a need for planned maintenance or immediate repair of the impactor. This feature is a value added to ensure accurate product testing. This screen shows the correlation of GRMS levels to accumulated fatigue. The deviation from the set point is 90% to 110% of the goal. This is considered reasonably close to the screening goal. It is interesting to note that the table uniformity had to be plus or minus 0.2 GRMS to get within 10% of our stress goal. This does not and cannot happen in tables without dynamic multi-zone control. Here we see the multi-zone control setup. This is using four identical plates, each mounted strategically on the table with an accelerometer. Instead of averaging the four points to come up with a GRMS acceleration, four independent control loops are used to ensure each zone receives the set point GRMS. Through a controller algorithm and an accelerometer, actual GRMS levels are monitored and dynamically react to the stress in order to bring each zone to the given set point. This graph shows a typical repetitive shock table with four accelerometers to control at an average of 20 GRMS. One accelerometer reads about 23. 
One is close to 21, the other two at are about 18.5. So while the average is 20, none of the products are at 20. As bad as this looks, the actual stress levels are much, much worse due to the exponential nature of stress according to Miner's rule. The accumulating stress on products can be from 10% of the desired goal to more than 900% of the planned stress on the products. By comparison, this is the same test using multi-zone control with four individual closed control loops. As you can see, all four zones are very close. In fact, you might find it difficult to even see the lines compared to the set point. This is how close the GRMS levels need to be to get the accumulating fatigue within plus or minus 10% of the planned goal. Again, this is key not only on new equipment, but as the impactors age. Multi-zone control will help make up for impactors that are delivering less force due to wear. It also will help when the table is not loaded uniformly. Now, let me hand it over to Mark again to go over where you can find more information and guidance on reliability testing. Thanks, Mike. Listed here are some valuable resources on accelerated stress testing. You can also depend on Thermotron for information regarding HALT or HAS or any other type of environmental testing. Here are some reliability organizations that can also provide valuable resources and information on HALT and HAS. Most testing programs begin with a specification that identifies the procedure to be used for the stress testing program. Listed are some of the common organizations who sponsor these specifications. Military Standards, Telcordia, SAE, IPC, EIA, and IEC. The following are just a few industries that have adopted AST procedures. Computer manufacturers, electronics, aviation, defense, telecommunications, consumer electronics, medical, automotive, sensor and instrumentation. It is worth noting that a majority of the large technology companies use HALT and HAS testing as part of their quality programs. Here are a few that have published their HALT HAS results. I'm sure as you can tell, most of you are well familiar with all of these companies and their great names in the industry. In conclusion, HALT and HAS can be effective tools to develop robust products and ensure that warranty costs are low. Miner's rule is a magic to quickly finding defects in products. It is also the reason that table uniformity is so important. Thermotron's patent-pending multi-zone control technology in our extreme AST system provides a kind of table uniformity required for safe and effective HAS testing. This concludes our webinar. We now have some time for questions and answers. And thank you all for sending in your questions during the presentation. And a reminder, if you still have some questions, feel free to send them in and we'll hopefully get to them. Thank you. All right, well, our first question for today is, Hobbs said that tight uniformity is not necessary for an effective product screen. Why are you saying it is? Mike, you care to answer that? When looking at Mike Silverman's pie chart, vibration is typically the dominant cause for failures. With the exponential nature of Miner's rule, it is critical to make the table as uniform as possible. Until now, tight uniformity just wasn't possible. Manufacturers try to make their products extra robust and then make sure that the screen was light enough that even if the table wasn't uniform, they wouldn't take too much light from their products. Many manufacturers have understood the importance of uniformity and have gone to great lengths to manually adjust the tables they were using. Thanks for the response, Mike. Our next question is, is the repetitive shock table with multi-zone control one solid table or physically two or four tables? The table is physically one structure and divided through a sophisticated control logic in the controller. The way the system works is by attaching an accelerometer to each product. The impactors or air hammers under each product zone hit harder or softer to make each product the same vibration level. All right. Well, our next question is, are failures found at such high levels really relevant? Mike, care to answer that for us? The way that I would answer that is that HALT is finding the limits of the product that are often not discovered during a normal test or at low stress levels. All products have weaknesses. HALT just exposes them quickly. The best way to verify that HALT is valid is to try it on a product that is already having reliability issues. You will find that the failures found in HALT after a short time of testing will correlate very well with your known field failures. 
Okay. Our next question is about picket fencing. What is it, and is it a bad thing in reliability testing? Mike? Picket fencing is when the PSD shows very high energy at some spots, with almost no energy at other frequencies. It's bad because, as we explained earlier, you don't know what frequencies could cause problems for your products, so we want to deliver energy across all the spectrum. The nature of repetitive shock tables is that random energy is across a broad spectrum, but it is not flat. Ideally, it should deliver energy at all frequencies. Tables that don't are referred to as having picket fencing. All right, well, we have time for one last question, and it sounds like it came from a skeptic. Theoretically, this all sounds good. However, have you seen any of this actually work? Mike, care to answer that for us? I have. We had a medical equipment manufacturer who ordered a halt chamber but wanted to do a test before his chamber shipped. He came into our lab, and within three hours he found a problem with the circuit board that they would have ordered if they couldn't have run that test. They would have shipped out product that would have failed early. Another customer was running HASS on all their commercial airplane products. They asked me to look at their equipment to see if there could be a reason why all of a sudden they were having 5% of their products fail during HASS. We looked at the screen and found that someone had changed the screen slightly. It was the same GRMS level, but over a narrower frequency band, so they were screening every product harder than they intended. It was bad that some of the products were failing, but it was worse that their products that didn't fail were severely damaged and on their way to customers. So yes, this principle does work, and yes, it causes problems if not run correctly. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate you answering those questions for us. This concludes our question and answer session. If we did not get to your question, we will be sending out a document with all the questions and answers shortly. And lastly, on behalf of myself and Mike Hicks, I'd like to thank you for attending our webinar on the importance of table uniformity with Halt and Hass. We hope that you learned a lot and got a lot of great information. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.